Hello everybody, just putting together a quick video to show you some of the new GraphQL capabilities that uh, we at Tyke have been working on um, over the last um, sort of five, six months or so. Um, we think it's pretty special and um, really hope you enjoy. Um, I'm going to start by um, first composing a GraphQL API from an existing GraphQL data source. So in this example, we're going to be using Trevor Blades. Now, if you have heard of or haven't heard of uh, ha haven't heard of it before it's a GraphQL API which allows us to call into say a single country um, let me just simplify this for the for the demo a single country such as Great Britain and I can find out some information about that country and I have various other endpoints such as the continent um, so I can get the continent code and the name of the continent as well for that particular country I can change the code to US also and send that request if it allow oh no I didn't change that to US send that to US also and I can get the United States so um, nice and easy so let's um, start by configuring type to reverse proxy to the Trevor Blades API we'll call it Trevor Blades and it's a GraphQL API we're proxying to an existing GraphQL service um, and this is targeting the uh, Trevor Blades URL. When I hit the Configure API button, I'm just going to quickly turn off authentication. By default, APIs are, have some level of protection, um, but I'm going to turn it off for the purposes of this demo. We head over to the schema, and you can see that what Tyke has done is called in to um, query the uh, the schema for this Trevor Blades API, and is now um, effectively uh, created an introspection call. And we've been able to find out all of the information or the, pull in the documentation for this particular API. I can now use the playground um, and then if I send write a query, let's say um, country GB and then I can call into the country, I can say code GB and then I can put in the code name native send that request so type gateway has received that request and then reverse simply reverse proxy to that Trevor blade service let's um, save this API and then create a new one because I'm going to be composing a new API on top of this Trevor blade service so let's add a new API and I'm going to call it composed and this is a GraphQL service um, and we're going to be composing a new GraphQL service from scratch. And for simplicity, I'll turn off authentication. Oh, let's key this anyway. Save that API. And then we need to create a schema for our service. So um, this will be a subset of the Trevor Blades API. Now, um, let's have a look to see what maybe we want them. Let's have a look. We want to call a country. I'm just going to pull this straight from Trevor Blades to make things simple. So we have a type country. I'm going to remove some of these fields just for simplicity so I don't have to implement everything. So now we want to expose a country um, to the ability to query the country to the graph. So let's say country and we need an ID um, or code and the and this returns a country and the code should be let's grab this straight from this service country filter input I think that's how it works we'll soon find out and the query Okay, and we need to remove this, and then we need the string query operator input. So let's find that, and we'll copy that in there. We'll paste that in there to make it nice and simple. So we'll update this API. The problem is now, um, if I um, send this query, 
we don't actually have a data source configured because I've just created it, I've just written a schema. So let's attach a data source to this query, to the country query. So we can define the data source and we're going to set this to type GraphQL. And what that will do is um, inspect to see what other GraphQL APIs I have. And I have the Trevor Blades API. And um, automatically it said disable the field mapping and call into the country field and I can rename that field on that upstream um, API. Everything looks fine at the moment. I can update that field now and press update and save that. So if we head over to the playground, I can now write my query for my new service and I'm going to call into the country and the code should be um, GB code name native and send that request. Awesome. So now I've exposed just a subset of the graph. You'll see there's no other fields um, or types available um, to this um, particular GraphQL API that I'm just about to, starting to compose. Um, but the problem, well, it's not really a problem. Um, I'm just um, describing a fictitious use case. Um, I need to enhance this country type. I want to be able to add new um, new information or new fields to this particular um, API but it, it's it's not um, inherent within it, it doesn't exist within this exact uh, within this GraphQL schema so in here um, maybe I want to see what bordering countries there are and I've found that there is a rest API um, so I can query the US and I can have a look at the country's borders so We've got information here about the country's borders. We've also got information about the population. So in this population is um, an integer and borders is um, a, a slice or array of strings. So let's um, enhance this GraphQL API. So coming out of here, let's um, add a new API. And this API is called countries rest and this is a rest api that proxies to this service and i'm going to configure that api scroll down it's keyless to start with nice and simple i can save that and now we've got countries rest and this proxies to some path countries rest v2 alpha so if I update the API, that's fine. So heading into our code composed API, we go to the schema and for the country, we want to add some new fields. So maybe we want to add um, population and this is an integer. And then we've got borders. And this is a slice of string. And then I can update that API and we can head over to data sources. The problem is this is this is definitely going to fail um, because if I started querying for the population and the borders, we haven't actually defined that data source. So we're going to get some errors coming back. So let's head back to the schema and attach a new data source for the population and borders. Let's head over to population first and we define the data source and the data source type is a rest api which we predefined inside type um, we want to call to that country's rest api and the endpoint we want to hit um, using the go um, text template language or syntax we want to um, take uh, using it well we say write a dot and we say object and object define is um, this particular object country object and we want to grab the code and we want to perform a get request here and I want to enable a field mapping because I only want the population field on the response of this rest countries API and update that and then I'm going to do a similar thing for the borders so I define my data source and because I've predefined it here I can select that and then I can turn on the field mapping and say borders and update this field so now if I update the API head over to the playground 
and now when I send my request, you can see that I've pulled in the um, population from a resting point. You can see that <clears throat> from that um, same resting point, I've pulled in the borders of Great Britain. Let's try US, and I can send that request, and then you can see I've pulled out the population of the United States along with the borders Canada and Mexico. And that's it. Thank you very much. Um, hope you've enjoyed. Um, looking forward to hearing any feedback from anybody who's starting to um, play with Tyke and the brand new Universal Data Graph. Thank you.